In this video, I'm going to be showing you the fastest, easiest, most efficient way of doing the KO Perico setup missions. Now, a quick disclaimer at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to be doing any job warps in this video. Uh, if you don't know what job warps are, there's the strategies that speedrunners use. And I assume if you're watching this video, you're just looking for an efficient way to do the setup missions um, and not how to speedrun these setup missions. If you want to know how to speedrun it, you should probably go watch some speedrunners. This is just how I personally, over the last four months of me doing these KO Perico videos, the way that I just do my setup missions. And if it helps anyone, that's great. I did one of these videos a few months ago. And since then, I've actually, from feedback from the community and just from me finding ways to do it faster myself, it's changed. So I wanted to do an updated video here for you guys today. I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump into it. So first things first, if you want to do the KO Perico missions, you need to own a Kasaka. And to do that, you go over to Warstock here and it is right here. Now these do go on sale from time to time, but obviously they don't tell us when they're going on sale. So you may have to wait a few months uh, to get this on sale. So you may as well just get it at full price. Same thing goes for the upgrades. I have not upgraded mine. The only upgrades that I have for this is the Sparrow. The Sparrow is a vehicle. If you don't have it, you need to have it. This thing is just a lifesaver. Not only actually with the Kasaka and and the just doing missions with the Kasaka, but just in general, you can spawn this vehicle when you're doing other things, um, and it's just a great vehicle to have. It's very fast, it's very nimble, it's got awful armor, so it does damage very easily, but it's a great vehicle. Make sure you purchase the Sparrow. Okay, so now assuming you own a Kasaka, let's just go ahead and jump into it. So to start up a mission, you're going to come over to this planning board right here, and you're going to select a planning board, right? And at this point, it's going to prompt you to spend 25k to start up the mission. Now, if you want to do this in hard mode, you have to do the mission once. And then to get hard mode, as soon as Pavel calls you, you have to accept the mission within 48 minutes of him calling. So 48 minutes after this mission is available, if you do it then, you will get it in hard mode. And if you're doing this solo, it takes around three hours uh, is the cooldown for this mission. Well, for this video today, we're gonna be doing it in normal mode. So let's go ahead and start this thing up. So first things first, gather intel. So for gather intel, this is how we're gonna find out what our primary target is gonna be. So as soon as you get the gather intel mission, go ahead and sit down right here. And then you're going to fast travel to wherever is the closest point to the plane, to the vellum that you're going to be taking over to the island. So if you go into fast travel, you can see here the closest point for us is going to be right here. So we're going to select that. All right, now we're going to get up and all we're going to do is take our Sparrow. Again, it is just a great vehicle. If you don't have a Sparrow, you need to get one inside of your Kasaka. It is just makes your life so much easier. Like I say, it's a very fast, nimble um, vehicle as well. So at this point, like I was talking about with speedrunners, they use job warps to get around the map. And again, if you're speedrunning, go ahead and do that. Uh, but for the average person, I would assume that you're just doing this as legitimate as possible. And you just want to do it a little bit faster. So that's what we're doing here today. So this does, the Venom does spawn in like five different locations. It's typically always around the outskirts of the map. Um, so what I do is I come in and I shoot the middle first. And then I'll just wait here for a second. And then we'll go to this vehicle. But sometimes, you see how that guy's running over to the vehicle? Then we'll shoot the vehicle. And that should have taken out all of them. Sometimes you'll get one straggler that gets kind of stuck behind the propeller of the plane. And you'll just have to land and kill him. Uh, but for the most part, if you shoot the guys in the middle first, everyone else will run towards the car for cover. And when they run over there, you can just blow up the car. And as you can see, there is no one here anymore. Now, this is, if you're in a private lobby, I should have mentioned at the beginning, always do these setup missions or any of the Kasaka missions in the uh, in an invite-only lobby. There's no reason to do it in a public lobby. All you're going to do is have griefers see that you're up to something and they'll try and shoot you down. So what we're going to do now is put up our wheels and head on over to the yellow marker right down near the docks. So let's speed this part up a bit. All right, and here we are coming into KO Perico. Now, this first setup mission is definitely the longest from doing what we just did, having to go and get the plane and just fly it all the way across the map to this location. It takes a while, but this part we're going to show you is very quick. Um, if you do it the way that I do it, then I'm going to show you here right now. It's very quick and simple, and anyone can do it. So let's go ahead and jump in this thing together. Just wait for this uh, cut screen here to load in. Go on. All right, sir. Okay. All right, so as soon as you spawn in, you're going to see a motorcycle straight in front of you. 
you are literally just going to run over to this motorcycle and this is going to be our vehicle of choice heading all the way to the tower. So if you follow the route that I'm going to be taking here, it's going to be the easiest way to do it. Sorry, my recording looked like it was lagging there a little bit, so I just stopped for a second. Okay, so you're just going to go all the way up here. Avoid all... <laughs> Driving in KO Perico, I talk about it in a lot of my KO Perico videos, is awful. Uh, <laughs> when you're going through these fields, you can literally hit anything and go flying. So just try and keep your eyes out on some of these bushes uh, because they are awful. But we're just going to be driving up here, weave through here. And as you'll see, there's going to be an opening. We're going to drive over this road and then up and over this. And then this is where we're going to be doing a jump. You may have to practice this a few times, but once you've done it a couple times, you will be able to do it all the time. So you're just going to go in between these two palm trees right here. And then we're just going to be ramping up and over. And there we go. Now you can see there's a car. So it does change depending on like the setup they give you. It's random every time. But as you can see in this one right here, we have a car that is driving on this road next to me. So I'm going to wait for him to pass. Sometimes you can have someone standing on the road where my head is, the top of my head there. If that's the case, drive down this way and just go up around him. But since we've done this, let's go. There is another car coming, but we'll get there ahead of him. And we're just going to ramp up here. Well, not ramp, but just drive up here. Take our time. And then we're going to come out right down here. Now, if you see on my mini map, there's that white circle with a white question mark in it right there. That is for the hidden treasure. I never really do it. It's, it's just a way. I mean, you can get like, I think it's like 15 grand per uh, hidden treasure. And there's two of them on the map. Let's see if I pause it. Yeah, you can see there's one here and one over here. We're going backwards. Um, but I just don't do it personally. Anyway, we're going to come all the way up here. And here's something to note, just FYI. If you see, you can see there's a person. Let me show you on the map here. See this guy that's right next to us over there. If he's there, that means this box that we need to go to is up here. If there's nobody there, that means the box is either going to be straight ahead next to this door or straight over there next to that door. But if that person is showing up on your minimap, if there's someone standing right there, no matter what, you're always going to have to go up these stairs. Okay, let's speed this part up a little bit. So it could be either right here or it could be on the next level. So it could be right here as well. But as luck would have it, I get it all the way on the bloody top. <laughs> so let's go all the way up. All right. And as you can see, it's right here. Now, this thing is a math equation. I'm awful at maths. I've been told how to do this a million times. I just personally like to wing it. So uh, <laughs> let's just go ahead and do that. I think this is times one. This is just one, right? And then this is two. Okay. So it should be just straight across for us. That one was pretty simple. See, I'm so good at math, man. Okay. So once you've done that, if you just go into your phone and go onto the bottom right here, this will pull up the camera feed. Now, this is going to how we're going to see how we're going to how we're going to. This is how we're going to see what loot we have. So you can skip through these first couple. Unless it's your first time doing this heist, then scout all of these cameras so you know all the entries to the compound. All right. So basement. This is the one that's going to show us our loot. What are we going to get? We actually, what a great thing for this video. We got a pink diamond. So you can either get a pink diamond, which is the best. You can get a tequila, which is the least amount. You can get a necklace or you can get bearer bonds. The bearer bonds is the only one that will be inside of this safe right here. The bearer bonds is worth 1.1 million. This, I believe, is 1.3. The necklace is one and the, um, the tequila is 900,000. So you can go ahead, if you're with people, if you're going to be doing this in a group, you can go ahead and go through these cameras so you can see what loot people are going to be picking up. Um, just so you can plan it out a little bit better. Obviously, paintings are just a little bit better than cash. They're not great. The thing you're going to be looking out for the most is that right there, which is gold. Now, with the office cam, you can do this solo. You don't need people with you. There could be paintings. So there could be one either on that wall right there, which will fill up your bag halfway full. Or if you go to the next camera, there could be one all the way on the right over here. You can see I don't have any paintings. But if you do have paintings in here, even if you're doing it solo, you can pick these things up. And then make sure right there ahead of us, that is the wall safe where you see all those pictures on the wall. Make sure when you come up here, you open that up because you'll get a little bit extra cash and some health if you need it. And then on the left side, you see that red chair, the office chair, the one in the middle with the, like the gold frame. Just to the left of it in this frame, 
You can see that black horse that's standing open in a little treasure chest. Just beneath that, there's actually a drawer that you can open that will have a golden gun in it. So go ahead and grab that as well if you want. And then, like I say, you can go through the west storage. You can go through all of these if that's what you're interested in. We have some gold there. There's no painting on the wall here, unfortunately. But let's see the other side of this exact same one. Is there going to be gold? There is. So you'll actually see this, this part of the heist, uh, you'll actually see in Friday's video. There's going to be a video I'm making on Friday that's going to have these um, in that, if you want to see that. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is it. So what I used to do, and you can, guys can let me know in the comment section down below if it still works, but someone told me it didn't work anymore, and I just haven't tested it myself. But what I used to do is go into online here and just find new session, and it'll take you straight back to your Kasaka, done and dusted. But since people are telling me it doesn't really work anymore, I just jump straight down here, and then it'll take us back to uh, the airstrip so we can just get on the plane and get out of here. Now, this is the point. If you want to continue looking around the map, like if you're somebody that wants to go and get this treasure, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you're thinking to yourself, okay, I want to see if there's any outfits that I can wear so I can wear a disguise so I don't trigger any of the guards when I'm walking around. You can look for outfits. There's going to be like three of them here. There's going to be three down here. And there's typically, there's like 10 locations outfits can spawn, but they only really spawn in like one or two places. So out of the 10, it's random every time which one they will spawn in. Or if you want to get grappling hooks and things like that, because you want to jump over the walls, you can look for grappling hooks. If you want to do the key codes, well, the key codes you don't do in this one, but if you want to get key codes when you're doing the mission, you just kill the guards that are in this area, and then you can go in the side doors, either the north wall or the south wall. Or gate, I should say. North gate or south gate. Now, another thing you can do is poison the guards at this point. Now, what poisoning the guards does is just makes them a little bit, like, lazy when they shoot at you. If you're doing the heist, when they shoot at you, their aim will be awful. And to do that, there's three places you're going to need, like, powder. I think they call it cutting powder. Now, you can either go to this location right here on the map that I'm pointing at. If there's nothing there... You can go to this location on the map. You go to this building right... Actually, no, sorry. It's this building right here. And it's going to be in this corner. Right there. You can go there. And if it's not there, it could also be right down here on a box right here. So let's say you've picked up cutting powder from one of those three locations. Once you have it, you need to put it in a water tank. And there's a big water tank right here. And there's a big water tank right here. And there's a few smaller water tanks on the map. I believe there's one like down here. There's another small water tank up here. But I don't know. I've never tried putting the cutting powder into those. So if I was you, if you have the cutting powder for 100%, go to either this water tower here or like I say, the one that's down here at the main dock. So I think that's it for the setup. Once you've scouted the island, you feel comfortable. You got, you know what your primary loot is. You've figured out where the outfits and stuff like that is. You've got treasure if you want treasure. All you're going to have to do is head on back to the plane and then go ahead and return to Los Santos. And if you're anywhere on the map, just go ahead and kill yourself at some point and it'll bring you straight back to the plane. All right, so now we are back at Los Santos International Airport. So all I do right here, you can say Intel complete. I'm just going to go online, find new session, invite only, and this is going to take me straight back to the Kasaka. All right, we're back. So at this point, we're going to choose our vehicle. Now, I would say the most popular ways to do this is going to be one of two things. Either the long fin, I would say is a very popular method. People like to take the long fin to the airstrip, get the primary loot, and then come back down and go in the drainage tunnel. Or some people like to do it fast, and maybe you don't get secondary loot. Or if you're doing it with a group of people, I would highly recommend the Kasaka. So we'll just go ahead and do the Kasaka uh, first, and I'll actually do the long fin second. But I'll leave timestamps below so you guys can skip ahead to either one of those if that's what you prefer. Okay, so we're doing the Kasaka. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. Let's look at our map and see how far away we are. So as you can see, we're all the way down in the city and we're most likely going to have to either go to this side, up the top, or down to the left. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to run on over here, sit down, and then jump. And when I say jump, I obviously mean fast travel. <laughs> so we're going to go into here and find the closest one. So one of these two locations will be fine. I'm just going to go ahead and go to this one. All right, man, here we are. We've arrived at our location. Same thing. We're going to go ahead and get the sparrow. This is why... You need the Sparrow. Obviously, you don't need it. You can definitely do these setup missions without it. But in all honesty, 
you have to have this. It just makes your life so much easier. If you're doing it without a sparrow, you're just wasting your time. Um, so what we're going to do is take the sparrow over to the location where the submarine is. Now, when we get there, there's going to be four vehicles we need to take out. There's going to be a helicopter and there's going to be three dinghies. So the first thing we're going to take out, as you can see, we're coming up to them right here. We have the dinghy and the three boats. So, oh, sorry, the, the helicopter and the three boats. Let's take out... Well, I was going to say the helicopter first because it's going to start flying around, but I accidentally shot the other one. But either way, you don't need to worry. There we go. Now we can just take out the other two dinghies. And that's it. Done. So at this point, at this location, you can actually land your helicopter here. And you can hope that it's going to be here when you get back. But this is the only location that you can really do this in. Um, but it's most likely going to land in the water or the waves are going to come and get it. So typically what I would do is I would just land the helicopter in the water anyway. We would just get rid of the helicopter. If it's there when we get back, you could probably take it. But for the most part, I just land it in the water and then just swim straight down um, to the submarine. Because when we leave, we're going to be using a dinghy just to speed it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get into the submarine. Now, this is a really easy mission. You can see I don't have any armor or anything on me. The thing you have to watch out for is these guys have shotguns, so you don't want to be hit by them. So the first thing I do, and this is just habit, I always come over to this box right here and get a rebreather. The reason I do this is because it just refills my rebreather. I never have to buy a rebreather. Uh, so now I'm going to switch to my weapon. The weapon of choice for me, which is the weapon I really like to use inside of the Kaopriga heist as well, which is the aggressor setup, is this right here, the assault shotgun. Let's go ahead and pull this thing out. And again, just be careful. You do not want these guys to hit you. So he's not dead because they have shotguns. Okay, he is dead. So if you see these boxes, go ahead and shoot them because this one has ammunition. And then there's a few other ones in here if we get to that point that are going to have armor in them or they could have health in them and things like that. But this is just the setup. This is the way that I do this uh, mission. And then there's going to be another guy. All right, he didn't die, but it's fine. We have a shotgun. And there's going to be two people right here. Now, these guys, technically, I don't even need to kill them. Because, as you can see, sometimes what we're looking for, the sonar jammer, is on this table right here. And I can see it's not there. So, because I know it's not there, I just run back the way that I came. The reason for this is I just think it's easier. I just think it's a little bit easier. Um, because there's a, there's a few more. There's like two more places this thing could be. So, now I'm just going to drop down in here. There could be a guard here. Or he could be over here. There he is. And then there's going to be another guard that's going to be up on the walkway. I'm actually going to go this side just because I'll have a better um, field of view here at shooting him. There we go. And there could be someone down here, but he's not spawned, so it's fine. Let's just keep an eye on this. There he is. Wait, shoot him. All right, let's eat some snacks there. So here's the second box. This one is the one I believe that has the armor in it. Yep. So now you can see I now have full armor. So the second place that this sonar jammer could spawn is right down here on this right here. And as you can see, it's not there. So I've got one of the awful RNGs here, the one that's furthest away, but it's fine. Um, so for the next one, what am I stuck on here? So for the next one, let's run down here. There's going to be another guy in this hallway. Let's take out him. All right. And then there's going to be another guy in this next hallway right here. Where is he? Should be right here. Okay. And then there's going to be one more person. Okay, there's the sonar, Johnny. You can see right down there. Okay, you guy's not here, so that means he's going to be right here. Okay. And there you have it. Now, at this point, if you need health, obviously, shoot this. There's a little health pack in there. But this is the last location it could be. At this point, I'm kind of glad it was this far away. Because if I got it at the beginning, I wouldn't be able to show you this. But at least now you know those are the three locations it could be in. And now what we're going to do is just run. We're going to trail back. Where did that guy come from? I have literally <laughs> never seen someone spawn right there as I'm leaving. That's a new thing for me. Okay. Anyway, we're going to run back like I say. We're just going to backtrack the exact same way that we came in here. And we're going to leave in the same way we came in. So if we just go back down here. Straight back up here. We know there's not going to be anyone around here. Because this is the way that we came in. So we're just going to run around here. And if you didn't get that armor. You can grab it on the way out. 
and then straight back upstairs and then this is going to lead us straight to the front door which is right here you can get the rebreather now on the way out if you prefer okay so then we're just going to go ahead and exit now at this point like i say in this location our helicopter is actually still there you can see but i'm going to show you what i typically do go to services kasaka request dinghy and then we're just going to go up so obviously if your helicopter is right there you could grab your helicopter it may be a little bit faster but for the most part you can't park your helicopter right next to where you swim up so that's why you can request the dinghy which is free um when you have the kasaka and then since we did move the kasaka very close to us all we do now is go on over. You can see our helicopter is about to be engulfed in, in uh, I was going to say flames, in waves, in water there. But you can park it there. But most of these missions, they don't have a little bank that you can park on. So you're just going to go ahead and do what I just did. Grab your dinghy and then just go straight over to this. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people, like I did at the beginning, you know, I try swimming, I'd get killed. You take out these helicopters, more helicopters will spawn. You don't even need to worry about these helicopters. Just grab a dinghy and away you go. So as soon as we get up to this uh, submarine, it's not like the Sparrow helicopter where you could just fly up to it and enter. This one, you are going to have to get off. So we're just going to come straight up onto the side here. Just like this. And then hop off. And then here we are. And as soon as you enter inside of the submarine, it's going to be mission complete. And there you have it. Complete. So that's for the Kasaka. Now, go ahead and you can skip ahead. I'll leave it timestamped. You'll be able to see it beneath if you don't want to see this one. But for this one, we're going to go for the second most popular vehicle, which is the long fin. Now, again, with this one, there is speed run strategies to be able to do this much faster. But I'm just going to be showing you the way that I do it. So we're going to go ahead and get in our seat again, because this time we're going to be getting much closer to the beach. All right. Sorry, I had to restart that up here for a second because my recording stopped. So I needed to make sure that that was still working. OK. Let's make sure we're in the same spot. All right, so I'm actually not going to move it up to the coast this time like I did last time because I'm actually going to be going into a new lobby as soon as we get this long fin. So after we've got the long fin, then I'll move it a little closer. Okay, so let's speed this part up. Let's get on over to the police station. Now, this could actually be in one of three police stations. One of them is awful, uh, but it's not this one. That one's over there. Uh, but most of them are pretty simple. So let's speed this up. All right, here we are approaching the police station. Now, the cool thing about this location is it's actually quite easy to flip the trailer. And if you flip this actual trailer, what will happen is you'll actually have the trailer spawn outside the police station, which will make your life a little bit easier. So let's see if we can flip it. Ooh, it almost flipped. It almost flipped. Let's try again. I don't want to hit the trailer because if we hit the trailer, the mission will be finished. That police car is in the way of the trailer as well. I'm just trying... Sometimes you can have it flip. Flip! It didn't flip. It's fine. It didn't flip, but it's fine. So what I'm going to do right now is if we actually let the police kill us, um, we don't need... The, the police... We won't have a wanted level anymore. So I'm just going to let them kill us real quick. And if that trailer spawned outside the police station, now all we need to do is pick it up and drive away. But unfortunately, the trailer didn't flip over, so it's not going to be inside the police station. But what I'm going to do right now is go to vehicles, request, and the phantom wedge. The phantom wedge, this is the only reason I purchased it, was for doing these missions. Um, so if you owe one, great. If not, as you can see on the map, they do show you. You can see there's two here, but they're not a phantom wedge. They're just regular trucks. And then here's another one, and that one is a phantom wedge. So if you see two trucks on the minimap that are next to each other, those are just regular trucks, but you can still use them. Uh, if you see one by itself, that's a phantom wedge. All right, let's speed this part up and just get back into this police station here. Okay, so like I say, if it does flip over, it'll actually spawn out here. It'll literally spawn out here, and you can just pick it up and drive off, and you have no cops coming after you. But if it spawns in here, like this one has, you're going to have to back up into it again, and the alarm is going to go off. There you go. And unfortunately, the way I blew this thing up, it's going to be hard to pick up this trailer because we have a car stuck in between us. Come on! Flip over! You know what? I'm just going to pick it up normally. If it does flip, like I say, it'll spawn outside, but it's fine. The police are already on us at this point, so it doesn't bloody matter. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to drive to the location. You do have to lose the cops, but by the time you get there, it should be gone. And it's going to be this location right here. 
All right, and we're here at the location. But as you can see, the cops are still looking for me, um, <laughs> which is quite frustrating. So I'm just going to wait until those cops disappear. So I'm just going to run down here on foot to leave the truck right there. And these guys should leave any second now. All right, cops are gone. So let me just... All I need to do is probably get in this truck, and that is mission over. Now, like I say, there is speedrun strategies to do this faster. I'm sure if you're someone that does the Velum vehicle a lot, um, you probably have faster ways to do this. So leave it in the comment section down below to let other people know. I don't use the Velum too much, so I, d I haven't really practiced doing this very often. But this is just the way that I do it. Okay, now as soon as we come out, you can see it's complete. I'm going to go ahead and switch... And this is why I didn't move the long fin, or sorry, the Kasaka, because it would have moved anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and jump to a new session. All right, and as you can see on the clock behind me right there, it is 1 a.m. in game. So it is pitch black outside. And as you guys know, I like doing my videos in the daytime so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to speed up some time here a little bit and uh, come back to you when it's daytime. And all right, it is time. The sun is, should be up now. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure we move this into the location we want it to be. And we're not going to be moving our Kasaka anymore after we've done it this last time. Let's go ahead and move it to the beach. And since we're still in the driver's seat, we're going to move it forward a little bit, just like we did earlier. So let's do that. All right, and there we go. Successfully beached it. All right, now let's go ahead and start up our last few missions here. So we have the plasma cutter. Let's do this one first. And for this, we're going to be using our Sparrow for all of them. Obviously, you can use an Oppressor Mark II. The Oppressor Mark II, I do own one, um, but I'm just going to be using the Sparrow just for the sake of this video. Uh, but you can use an Oppressor Mark II, and some of these might actually be a lot easier with an Oppressor Mark II, as you'll see um, in this mission in particular. So let's go ahead and speed this up until we get to this first location. All right, here we are at our very first location. Now, this could be one of like four different locations. All of them are exactly the same. Obviously, just a little different location. So for this one, there's actually a faster way to do it. So what you're going to do is walk on in. As soon as we get in here, we're going to pull up our camera, take a picture from right here, and then send it to Parvel. And then we're just going to walk forward to this desk, turn around, and then walk straight back out. And it's that easy. You don't need to walk over to the board and take a picture. You can just take a picture from right within. And then we're going to go ahead and get in our chopper. And then we're going to fly on over to the location where the gang's going to be. Um, and this one, you can do it with the the sparrow. Obviously, like I say, if you have an oppressor, this particular part may be a little bit easier. But just for the sake of this, we're going to do it with the, uh, with the sparrow anyway. So let's speed this part up until we get to our marker. And all right, here we are approaching. So you see that yellow marker on the map? You do have to trigger it, letting it know that you're here, basically. So we're just going to go down here a little bit till we get to this yellow marker. Because I have done this mission before where I didn't touch that yellow marker. And what happens is you literally have to... I got all the way back to the Kasaka until I had to realize and then had to come back here. So anyway, now what I'm going to do, since this is one of the ones that's got a little wider area here, I'm just going to land down here. There we go. We've picked it up. And then we're just going to fly on out again and go straight back to our Kasaka. There's no need to wait for all the waves of people. Like I say, if you're in an Oppressor Mark II, it'd be a little easier. Because obviously with this, your propellers are going to get caught on the buildings. And you can all, you can hear, listen. My chopper is struggling. Um, but we just need to get in there, get out. And as you can see, here is our Kasaka. So all we need to do is fly on close to the top. You don't even need to land this thing. You just fly close to the top of it. And as soon as you get into the right distance, there you go. You can trigger it and in you are. All right, heist prep complete. On to the next one. So the rest of these are fairly easy. I mean, they are easy. None of these are difficult. So next we go to prep. And what do we have next is the fingerprint cloner. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, let's head on over. So I actually like the Keo Perico setup missions. I think they're actually pretty cool. I think they're well thought out. They are definitely designed to be a time sink. What I mean by that is making you go to one place and then have to go to another, then have to go to another. They are designed to make you, you know, have to go around the map a little bit. But I do like the story to them. I do like the story. So anyway, let's go ahead and get to this one. Um, and the thing you should notice for these missions is it's going to heavily talk about cameras and having to take out cameras. I do take out some of the cameras, uh, but not all of them, as you'll see right here. So we're coming up to our first location. And sometimes, you know, the locations can be easy to take out the cameras. And sometimes they're not as easy. 
Um, so what I've started doing recently is I don't even worry about the cameras at all. Because the only thing the cameras do is change it. So instead of the first bullet being in the back of somebody's head, the first bullet is in the front. That is the only difference. So I'm not going to take out these cameras. We're going to come in straight away. And you see, they just got one shot off of me. That's literally the only difference these cameras have made. Because as soon as you take your first shot anyway, it doesn't matter. It's bloody done with. They're, they're going to spook. It's not like you can sneak around in here, um, even if you're using a silenced weapon. So all I need to do now is wait for Parvel to stop talking so that we can actually go in and hack this thing. Because as you can see, he's just yapping away and we need to wait for it. All right, there we go. Now we can hack this thing. I actually had a bug the other day where it wouldn't let me click any of these and it was a pain in the butt. Okay, so this spells out Panthers. So P-A-N-T-H-E-R-S. There we have it. And now we just need to run to their little underground area. Again, super easy setup mission. Um, it's just a time sink. They do it on purpose, but it's very simple. So let's go ahead and speed this up again until we get to our second marker. And all right, for this one, it looks like we've got the marker that's over on the pier. This is actually my favorite one, just because there's so much room to land. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's just a nice one. Obviously, the same thing for this. It could spawn in multiple different areas. Um, there is like three different missions for this. And when I say missions, I mean, they, they just like to switch it up so you don't go to the same place every single time. But all three of them are the exact same mission, just in different locations. But... Like I say, this is just my favorite. It's right next to the coast. Now, these cameras I do take out. Again, you don't have to. All that's going to happen is when you leave, you'll have some cars chase you. But by the time the cars get here, you're going to be in your Kasaka anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of pointless. So, you can't sprint inside here. So, you're just going to have to do this light little brisk jog. And then it's going to be right here at the end. I literally just come in and then do a little loop right here and then walk out. And no matter which table it is on right there, if you just walk in, do a little loop and out, you'll pick it up. You will pick it up. See, I love this, this garage, man. I tried, if you've seen my like top 10 videos and stuff, like the top 10 vehicles, <laughs> I have a level in my 50 car garage that I wanted to dedicate to KO Perico vehicles. And I wanted it to look like that one, right? It has the supply truck in there. It's got everything. But the supply truck, when you purchase it, and I spent millions on the supply truck, it's a Merryweather vehicle. It's bloody useless, but it's a Merryweather vehicle. It doesn't fit inside of your 50-car garage. So I spent millions on it, and I can't even see it in my garage. It was an absolute disaster. Anyway, <laughs> we're here. We're back in the Kasaka. Like I say, we moved it closer so we don't have to swim or fly out all the way into the ocean. And there we have it. This is our second mission, second setup, I think. Finished. All right, there you go. Heist prep complete. Let's move on to the next one. And like I say, doing all of these, it literally takes... I don't know how long this video is, but it takes like 30 minutes, maybe. This video is probably a little bit longer than that because I'm explaining it more, but it's it's very quick. And then we go to the cutting torch. Now, the thing with the cutting torch is you may be thinking to yourself, oh, I don't need the cutting torch. I'm not doing the... Maybe you're not doing the drainage tunnel. If you're doing the drainage tunnel, you need the cutting torch. Uh, but for anything else, you don't technically need it. You either need the cutting torch or the explosives. But the cutting torch is an easier mission and uh, it's super useful. It's just super useful. You can go in the drainage tunnel. You can cut through all of the things instead of having to get the pliers. It's just easier. Now, with this mission, as I mentioned in the last video I did like this, there's three buildings that it can send you to. There's that tall one there on the right, which is probably my second favorite. It used to be my first favorite. Now it's my second. There's the one just beneath it, as you can see on the ground over there. That's more of a medium-sized building, which is my favorite. Or there's the furthest one, which is the one we're going to right now, as luck would have it, which is the house. Now, in the last video I made, I said I just hated this one so much. It's so far away. I used to just kill everyone. Just like, uh, see how it's locking onto those people? I used to just kill everyone beforehand. And, you know, it, it was just because I was frustrated. <laughs> I, I just hated it. But now, I don't. Now, all of these um, Cut and Torch missions, I always get the hard hat. No matter which one I go to, I get the hard hat. Does it take more time? It may take more time, but in all honesty, I don't mind these missions, to be completely honest. So, it just makes my life a lot easier if I don't have to shoot anyone. So, the first one is going to be right around this corner. What's he, what are you going on about? First one's right here. Nothing in there. Second one I go to is going to be this one right here. Nothing in there. Obviously, if you have better luck than me, you would have already picked it up by now. 
But since I haven't, we're going to go upstairs. Go to the left here. And go to our next one. Nothing in there. Okay. Let's go up to this guy over here. Hopefully this guy will turn around. There we go. And here it is. Because obviously, even though we have a disguise on, if you stand in their cone of vision for too long, it will trigger the alarm. So we just try not to do that. Obviously, we can kill all of these guys, but you know what? It's just not worth it. Don't bump into him. Okay, there we go. And into the helicopter, and away we go. Don't need to worry about any cars coming for us. Don't need to worry about shooting anyone. That is it. That's simple. And this, in my opinion, is the hardest one. And you're probably thinking, that was not hard. It's not hard, but it's the hardest out of the three. Just because it's the furthest away. That is literally it. It's just further away, so I say it's the hardest one. But all three of them, the one we just did, the big tower you can see right there above my helicopter, and then the one just beneath it, which is the medium one. Um, but yeah, that's it. How simple was that? <laughs> all right, so let's land on in, back into our Kasaka, and move on to our final mission. But I will talk to you guys about some of the disruptions as well. All right, heist prep complete. So this last one is going to be for our weapon. What is the weapon that we're going to be using here today? So for me, obviously, if you're doing this like silent and stealthy, uh, the aggress is probably the best weapon you can get. Also, if you're coming in with the Kasaka and you want to take out the Juggernaut, the, the, the aggress is the best one because you can shoot the Juggernaut in the back twice with the aggressor shotgun here and it'll kill him. None of the other weapons you can do that. In order to kill the Jug without this, you have to like knock him down to the floor and then shoot him in the back when he's on the floor. That's the only way to do it. But the Aggressor, in my opinion, is probably one of the best you can get if you're doing this heist. Now, for me, I'm going to be choosing the Conspirator. And the only reason I'm choosing this is because I'm doing a video tomorrow that I need this for. Because <laughs> we're going to be doing the fastest way to do the KO Perico heist solo with secondary loot and I need that. So make sure you stick around for tomorrow's video for see, uh, so you can see that. But well, this is the one that we're going to be getting. But if I was you and you're new, get the aggressor. All right. So as you can see right there, it says go to Merryweather HQ. Nobody likes that mission. It is awful. So the way I do it is I literally just go online, find new server, and then I just do it again. I hate doing it. I never do that mission. I've done hundreds of these heists and I always do this strategy to skip that mission. Now, some people in the comments of my old video, and they still talk to me about it to this day, they tell me about another strategy that you can do. It's literally personal preference, but if you do have the torpedoes um, equipped on your Kasatka, you can drive it over to where the, uh, Perry, um, Perry, the Merryweather HQ mission is, and as soon as the helicopter takes off, you can blow it up and then come back in and request another mission. Um, I just personally prefer doing it this way. I just do it this way. All right, so let's see what it gives me this time. There we go, the Penrith building. Now, there's three buildings it can take you to. This one, the 707 v Vusheppi, and the... I forget the name of the other one. The best one is the 707. The second best is the one that we've got right here. And the third best is the one that I was just talking about that I can show you. The reason the other one's the third best is because it's just more difficult to land on the roof. Um, but if you're using an impressor, it doesn't really matter. But for helicopters, uh, this one we're going to is fine. Now, if you're doing that, what I just did, and that strategy where you leave server and, or join another invite server in order to switch the mission, if you're doing it and you're like, it's not working, it keeps putting me on the Merryweather, I promise you it will eventually switch. I've done that like six times before in the past, before it switched and gave me the mission that I want. It's just, it, it, it's, I mean, it's random and sometimes it really wants you to do the Merryweather one, but it is just the worst mission. I hate it so much. It doesn't fit in. It doesn't make sense. Like these, the alternates are so much easier. And then you have that one, which is just ridiculous. It is just takes so long. It is so out of place. It's a great mission. I actually really enjoy the mission. And if you want to do the mission, then go ahead and do it. It's just so out of place and so time consuming compared to the alternatives. The alternatives is being this one right here are just so much easier. All right, so we're just going to go ahead, land right here. And then for this one, I used to do it just guns blazing, but now I just do it. I do it very stealthy. I just take them out one by one. We do it without triggering the alarm. Even though we don't trigger the alarm, the helicopters are still going to come at the end. But let me show you. So you're going to kill this guy first. I actually, because I'm using a shotgun, I completely messed that up. I hit one of the guys behind him. So either way, it's fine. You can do this stealthy. 
But because I have big fat fingers using this shotgun, we kill the people behind. But it is what it is. There we go. These guys are super easy anyway. All right. Excuse me, sir. Can you not shoot me? God, my aim is awful. There we go. But yeah, if you shoot that guy first, like I did, <laughs> like I was trying to do, uh, if you shoot the door so the door opens, then shoot him in the head, it will actually just do it stealthy. And I've done it before a million times. I'm sure you guys have done it. You can definitely do it stealthy. I think because I shot him and there was a little gap, one of the stray shotgun bullets probably hit one of these guys and it triggered the alarm. Anyway, let's go ahead and do this. So 0047. This should be fairly simple since it's 00. There it is. Oops. There we have it. Okay, then we're just going to go ahead. Like I say, whether you trigger this alarm or not, it's uh, you're still going to get the helicopters on top of the roof. So it doesn't really matter. All right, let's go ahead and pick up these guns. I hope they have a different animation in GTA 6 for opening up safes and things. It just takes so long. Like the way you have to step back and then step forward. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, then we're going to make sure we go onto roof and make sure you click roof and not floor. I've done that a few times too and it's a pain in the butt because then you get stuck down on the bottom and it's, yeah, it's a disaster. Anyway, here we go. Off we go. And you see these helicopters that are chasing us? They are awful at going through these buildings. So if you just duck and weave through these buildings like this, you'll notice as soon as I get through this gap here, yeah, they're, they're long gone. They're not going to be able to keep up. Unfortunately, they do just respawn. So you'll see in a second, they'll spawn like up on the sky over here. There you go. <laughs> but they're never going to be able to catch up to you. They're never going to be able to catch up. And since I did restart, obviously that's why our Kasaka is not up on the beach right here. Because I did join a different server, another invite server. So I didn't have to do the Merryweather mission. Because that Merryweather mission is awful. Anyway, so now that is it. That is it for the prep setup. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the disruption here. If you are newer or if you've never done disruption... Let me give you some information that may help you decide whether or not you should do them. Now, the disruption missions are easy, but they're more difficult than the missions we have just done. Why is it just a black screen? There we go. It's just loading and loading and loading. And they're more difficult than the ones we just done. So you have to basically like chase helicopters or chase people on the ground or you get like a timer, like a 10 minute timer to be able to do it. They are still simple. You can still do them solo, but I'll talk to you about it here. So as you can see... It is complete. So we could just start the heist right now. But first, I'm going to talk to you about the air disruption. So there's three disruption missions. There's the weapons, there's the armor, and there's the air support. And what each of these does is if you do the weapons disruption mission, like I say, it's a little bit more difficult than the ones we just did, but it's really not that difficult. I'm not going to do them in this video, um, but I'm just going to talk to you guys about them and if you should do it or not. So weapons, it's basically going to make it so all the guards on the island, for the most part, have pistols. So you're not going to have to worry about if you do trigger the alarm, having people just mowing you down, okay? The second one is armor. Again, pretty self-explanatory, but it just means your guards aren't really going to have as good armor, so they'll be easier to kill. But you should always be going for headshots anyway, so it shouldn't really make too much of a difference. And then last but not least is air support. This one I think is probably one of my favorites. It basically means when you trigger the alarm, you won't have helicopters chasing you. You'll still have the main helicopter. You'll still have him chasing you. But if you just shoot at that helicopter a few times, he will fly away because he doesn't want to be killed. So then you can carry on the mission without any helicopters chasing you. Now, for me, I always try and do my high stealth and sneaky. So I don't like to trigger the alarm. I like to get the elite challenge and all of that. But if you're somebody that's like, I always seem to trigger the alarm when I'm leaving or I always seem to trigger the alarm at some point and they're always chasing me and I get killed... Go ahead and try these out. They are really good. They do make it way easier. I'm actually going to link a video at the end of this video and in the description of a video I did last Sunday, which is where the viewers voted how I have to do the heist. And it was probably one of the most difficult heists that they could have chose. But I did disruptions. I did all three disruptions going into it. And it ended up going from a mission or a heist that could have been so difficult to a heist that was very simple. And when I say very simple, it wasn't super simple, but we triggered the alarm immediately. We went into the compound and had all the guards chasing us. We left the compound, had to go all the way up to the airstrip. We did a lot and we still managed to complete the heist with having these disruptions. So if you want to go check that out, seeing all three of these disruptions in action, like I say, it'll be linked at the end of the video and in the description. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for this video on setups. I am going to walk you through this final screen here, just in case you're new and you're wondering why things are missing 
Um, but for the setups, that is it complete. Now, if you are new to the game at this point, if you go onto Intel, when you gather Intel, you can go around the island, right? And you can go back for secondary targets like all of this. But if you look at infiltration points, right? Yours may say one out of eight or two out of eight or three out of eight. In order to get these infiltration points, when you do the gather Intel mission, you need to take pictures of these locations. And as you can see on the map on the right there, you can see all of those white triangles of places of points of interest or infiltration points i should say so when you do your gather intel mission if you take a picture of these markers like this locations it'll make it so you'll get all eight of these infiltration points same with escape points just make sure you take pictures you can see all four of them in the white that i have on the map right there compound entry points now this one is a little bit different so if you click on it you can see main gate north wall north gate south wall south gate and drainage tunnel right you can see all of them on the map right here. Now, when you go to start this heist, you're going to say, okay, compound entry point. And it's most likely, I say most likely, it's going to 100%. If you do the prep mission, this prep mission right here, and when you do the equipment, if you choose cutting torch, when you go to the compound entry, it will only show you drainage tunnel. If you do demolition charges, it will only show you the front gate, the main gate. If you do both, It'll show you both the drainage tunnel and the main gate. And you're probably thinking, okay, well, how can I choose one of these? These you can only choose when you are actually doing the heist. So for example, let's say you landed the airstrip, right? And then you can look around the airstrip. Let's say you find an outfit. Great. You can walk around without being detected. If you find a, a grappling hook, then and only then you can't change it within the mission itself or in this setup because obviously you're already in the mission but if you find a grappling hook when you come to the compound you will see where it says south wall see that flashing if you have a grappling hook you can make your way to that location and you can jump over that wall same thing for north wall you can head to that location and you can jump over that wall now in order to be able to see these you first when you're doing the uh the prep mission in the beginning you know how you go into the cameras and you kind of look around make sure if you've never done it if this is your very first time doing it when you get those cameras and you're looking for what your secondary or primary loot is going to be and it shows you outside the compound just look all over the compound on every single camera that way you'll be able to get all of these locations if you want to go in the main gate during the heist, but you don't want to use explosives because you want to do it sneaky and stealthy, what you're going to have to do is when you are doing the heist mission itself, when you jump in, you need to get an outfit, so a disguise, and then you need to get the supply truck. And once you've got both of those things, you can literally drive straight to the compound undetected. None of the guards will shoot at you. You can drive straight up to the front gate and you'll be able to drive straight into the front gate without sounding any alarms. For the north wall, like I say, you need to find a grappling hook and then you can jump over the wall. For the north gate, if you want to get in here, you need to make your way to the compound and then kill the guards that are at the compound. If you do it stealthily with a silencer, you won't trigger any alarms, but one of them eventually will drop a key card and then you can pick that up and you can go in the north gate or the south gate. And then the drainage tunnel, obviously, all you need is the cutting torch from the prep mission. Use the Kasatka and you can get straight into the drainage tunnel. Now, as far as the escape points, again, it depends on what vehicle you use, but you can escape via the airstrip. And if you choose the airstrip, you're going to need to take out the island defenses Otherwise, as soon as you get into a plane, your plane will be destroyed by air defenses. So the airstrip is by far, in my opinion, the most difficult escape. So don't do that unless you're just doing it for fun. If you want to escape at the main dock, this is actually a really good one. You just need to leave the compound. If you're undetected, obviously better. But even if you are detected, it's fine. You just drive straight to the compound, into the water. You'll be able to pick up a boat and then just drive on out into the ocean and just keep going and keep going until the mission's over. Same thing with the North Dock, exact same as the Main Dock. And then Kasaka, you may be thinking, it's never given me the option to do a Kasaka Escape. Well, with the Kasaka Escape, you need to make sure you have the, the Kasaka as your main vehicle. Like when you go into prep right here, approach vehicle, you have to have the Kasaka in order to do the Kasaka Escape. Now, the Kasaka escape, though, isn't great. You basically leave the compound, have to drive all the way to the north of the map, and then jump into the water and then swim over to the Kasaka. 
So it's kind of a stupid one in my opinion. The best escape, obviously, for veterans that play this game a lot, is you literally, as soon as you come out of the compound, you get on a motorcycle, you drive to the bottom part of the map, you ramp off into the water, and then just swim out until you see those three uh, mines right there, and then just wait there, and then the mission will be complete. So that's why if we go into start right here, go into confirm, we're just doing this as a solo. So since I did two approach missions, that's why it's showing two of these, because I wanted to show you the two most common approach vehicles. So you can choose one of these two. And then infiltration points, you can see right now everything is on here. Absolutely everything is on here. But if I was to choose our actual vehicle first, it'll limit it to what we can actually do. So like the halo jump, if you want to come in and dive into the map, you have to get the Alcanist. The airstrip is obviously the Vellum. West Beach, the only way you can get directly to this is if you do the halo jump because you can't really choose West Beach any other way, so you can just halo jump into it. Main dock, obviously the Vellum or the patrol boat. Same thing with the North Dock. North drop and South drop, you have to do the Annihilator uh, mission to get that as your vehicle of entry. And drainage tunnel, obviously, is going to be the Kasatka. Or if you've got the cutting torch and you do any of these other ones, you can still have the drainage tunnel as your option is probably the most common. But as you can see, if I say right here, we do the Kasaka and then I go to infiltration point, it'll limit it. So obviously, if you are using the Kasaka, you 100% need to come in the drainage tunnel. There's no reason to go to any of the others realistically. And then compound entry point is drainage tunnel for the Kasaka. But if you want to enter any other way into the compound, like I say, you do that afterwards. When you actually start up the mission, you need to go find grappling hooks or disguises or things like that. And then escape point, as I say, you can go to the airstrip, but you are going to have to take out the air support. You can do the Kasaka, as you can see, which is all the way up north, which is honestly just kind of pointless. The north dock is quite far away, but if you want to go there for secondary loot, sure, go to it and then you just drive out. Same thing for the main dock. But realistically, just click any of these and do that thing that I said where you literally just get the motorcycle and ramp off the end of the map. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I actually just cancelled out of it because I didn't want to start that up right now and it's just thrown me over here. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions or want me to cover any other topic on the KO Perico heist, I do this heist every day. I've got dozens of videos on my channel. If you're like, oh, we just did all the setups and now I want to see you do a heist because I suck at the heist. Whatever it is, what strategy you use, I promise you I have a video on my channel for it. The fastest, easiest ways to do it. I have videos on the long fin. I have videos with the Kasatka. I have videos all over the place. You can click on the KO Perico uh, guides or any of those videos. And I'll leave two of them linked in the description as well and at the end of the video here. So if you do want to watch one of these, I'll have a long fin one and I'll have a Kasatka one. And it'll just be super nice and simple for you guys. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video.